Hey, welcome back everybody to your Cisco CERT success path. We're on phase three. We've laid the strong foundation with our career blueprint. We filled in some of the gaps with Network Plus. We got that routing and switching foundation with our CCNA and routing and switching. Now we want to take advantage of an incredibly popular technology in today's world, and that is cybersecurity. So phase three is earning our CCNA in cyber ops. Even if security is not your main focus, I really think we all need to be conversant in basic cybersecurity. I love the quote from the 2017 Cybersecurity Jobs Report. They said, every IT position is also a cybersecurity position now. How about that? Every IT position is really a cybersecurity position. Everybody needs to understand cybersecurity. And for several months now, I've been sounding the trumpet saying, hey, there's going to be a big demand for cybersecurity professionals in the near future. I was quoting statistics that talked about in 2019 or 2020, there was an anticipated shortage of 1.5 million jobs in cybersecurity. Well, just days ago, I read an updated stat, and it's even more dire than I originally heard. The projection now is that by 2021, there's going to be 3.5 million unfilled jobs in cybersecurity. This may or may not be your desired Cisco track, but you can see what a demand there is for it. We all need to know about it, at least at a basic level. We need to be able to communicate with our colleagues that are into cybersecurity. So if I were starting from scratch, after I finished my CCNA in writing and switching, my next step would be to get my CCNA in CyberOps. Here's what that certification is all about. Cisco says that if you get that cert, this is going to qualify you to be an associate level security analyst in a security operations center. And one of the really interesting things about this cert is that it does not require any prerequisites. Even though I would personally get my CCNA and writing and switching first, you don't have to. You could go directly for this certification. You pass two exams, and here are those exams, by the way, security fundamentals and security operations. Once you pass those two exams, you've got your CCNA in cyber ops. And just as a reference, I'll not read all this out, but these are the main topics that you see on your CCNA cyber ops exam and throughout the curriculum. And here at KW Train, our security instructor is Charles Judd, and he recently completed a CCNA cyber ops video training series that covers what you need to know to pass both of these exams and get you completely ready for your CCNA and cyber ops. And I asked him if he would identify one of the videos from that series for me to share with you here to give you a sense for what it's like to learn some of this cybersecurity content. And the video he chose was an introduction to NetFlow. So I'm going to hand you over to Charles in a moment for his video on an introduction to NetFlow. But stick around after Charles's video because, as I've been trying to do throughout this series on your Cisco Search Success Path, I want to give you a big discount on Charles's CCNA and CyberOps course. I'll see you back after the video. Before we talk about network security devices, we need to have a basic idea of what NetFlow is and how that works. NetFlow is a networking protocol developed by Cisco for collecting IP traffic information for the purposes of monitoring our systems. You can do lots of things with NetFlow. You can do a lot of troubleshooting. You can monitor bandwidth utilization and application performance because it provides such a comprehensive visibility into all of the network traffic that traverses a Cisco device. So NetFlow is very useful for identifying DOS, denial of service attacks, compromised endpoints, and high network usage for individual nodes. NetFlow information is commonly used by many network security devices, and that's why we need to have a basic understanding of NetFlow. And in order to do that, let's define what the flow in NetFlow is. So a flow is a unidirectional series of packets between a source and a destination. Now, don't get this confused with a session. A session is bidirectional traffic. So a flow is not the same as a session. It is only the unidirectional, a single direction series of packets. And here's the basic premise of how this works. Let's say you have a source at 192.168.1.1 and you make an HTTP request to a server at 10.10.10.10. Uh, your traffic goes across, in this case, a router that is a NetFlow-enabled device. And as it hits that router, a flow record is created, which is then exported to a NetFlow collector. 
And even though NetFlow was developed by Cisco, there are many different types of open source NetFlow collectors that will give you a graphic representation of that data or let you view those NetFlow records. So what exactly is inside of that NetFlow record? Well, it's what is referred to as the five tuple. And uh, you may be wondering, what the heck is a tuple? <laughs> so a tuple is simply a mathematical term that means a finite ordered set of values. So don't let that throw you off. And in this case, the five tuple that Cisco has identified inside of those NetFlow records is the source IP address, the destination IP address, the source port, the destination port, and the protocol being used. So again, back to our graphic in this case, we see that the source address would be 192.168.1.1. The destination address would be 10.10.10.10. The source port could be uh, any number of well-known ports that the HTTP would originate from. In this case, I've just chosen a random port, uh, 15728. Destination port is well-known port 80, which is what is used by HTTP traffic. And the protocol, of course, is TCP because HTTP is carried over TCP. And that is the five tuple that is contained inside of those NetFlow records. And just to give you a little more visibility of what that looks like, here's a screen grab from Wireshark. And if you're not familiar with Wireshark, I would highly suggest you go and get that. It's a free software, very powerful, probably the most well-known and, and widely used network analytics tool in the world. Uh, it's free. It's It's got lots of really powerful features, but this is a screen grab from a traffic capture in Wireshark. And here I've highlighted the five tuple that is visible. Uh, you can see, of course, the protocol is TC. The source, 192.168.124.100. Destination is 81.209.179.69. And the source port, 50272. And the destination port is, of course, port 80 for HTTP traffic. You may notice that there's lots more information inside of here than just the five tuple. We see things like uh, TTL, time to live. We also see a geolocation of Germany listed in here. Uh, so there's lots more information inside of a packet than just the five tuple. But for this exam, for the cyber ops exam, we are primarily concerned with the five tuple and being able to identify that inside of NetFlow records. So be aware that NetFlow is a Cisco protocol that's able to be used by many different open source NetFlow collectors. Remember that a flow is a unidirectional series of packets between a source and a destination, and that a flow is different from a session. A session is bidirectional traffic, and a flow is unidirectional traffic. And then remember the five tuple that we need to identify inside of NetFlow, which is source IP, destination IP, source port, destination port, and protocol. All right, I hope you enjoyed Charles's video on NetFlow. And I promise to give you a big discount if you want to go deeper with Charles into the CyberOps world. He recently completed the CCNA and CyberOps video training series, which gets you ready for both of the CCNA CyberOps exams. And if you go to our website right now, you'll see that it costs $297, which I think is pretty aggressive pricing considering that it covers two exams. But I want to give you a big discount. Instead of paying $297 since you're watching this series, you can get Charles's CCNA and CyberOps video training series for half that, 50% off, $148.50. Just go to this special link, kwtrain.com slash cyber50. That's kwtrain.com slash cyber50. And since this track does not require a CCNA in writing and switching, it does cover some basic network fundamentals at the beginning. And out of all those fundamentals, I think one of the most challenging things for students to get that I've seen over the years is to really master IP subnetting. So as a bonus, I want to throw in a course that I recently completed, and that is CCNA IP subnetting simplified. Even though I've been teaching subnetting for decades, just this year I thought it's time to reimagine how I teach this and to simplify it even more to make sure people really get it because truth be told, I didn't really get subnetting until I was preparing for my CCIE and writing and switching. That's where everything really clicked for me and I started to really understand it at the binary level. But I don't want you to wait that long. I want you to get it now. So I'm going to throw that in as a free bonus when you pick up Charles's CyberOps course at 50% off.